Um, from what I've read, it is a story about you were in the Aussie music scene for a while, mm -hmm. and then, according to the synopsis, you disappeared, mm -hmm. and then uh, you, they, the filmmakers found you again, or how did that work? Uh, Jay emailed me in about nine, in 2000, and I think it was eight or something, mm -hmm. and. Um, I didn't have to email them. I used to go to the library and just delete pages of you know spam. And somehow it wasn't nothing crazy. But I mean, go back and look at that one. If I had deleted it, none of this would happen. Because he didn't know me. He just didn't know whether I was some guy. That, who knows who I am? They just when he was a college student, he heard me play half a song, uh -huh. and they bought my tape and it blew their mind. Mark and Jane, they never forgot. It. That's an amazing you know yeah. thing to come back around. But I emailed and he said, oh, we would love to do a documentary about you. Your music has just touched our lives in ways you never even imagine. And we it's so unique. I'd like to. Try to find out where that comes from. And months later, I find out that they're the Duplass brothers. They, they're so humble. It wasn't like, I thought it was local access. I really did. I thought it was, uh, MT, what is AC? Not ACT, what is it used to be called? You know, on Austin Music. Yeah, Twitter. like, uh, Channel 10 and 16. Yeah, PBS kind of stuff. Well, right? well not even that. The next, the next oh, step like down. Uh, I thought it was like Channel Austin 10. Austin Community yeah, Channel. Yeah, that's literally what I thought they were. And they, <laughs> that's the way he presented himself. He didn't come with a scarf. And, I, yeah. you know. and then he asked, he said something kind of technical and made me look him up. And I, oh my God. So, you know. So we, we, we uh, he finished in, in 2010 and we submitted to South By and mm -hmm. I've been screen, screening film festivals all last year. So this has got to be a big change uh, versus uh, what you were doing before. What, what what were you doing in that amount of that, time? Well, I worked odd jobs, and if you had asked me, I was kind of still playing, mm -hmm. but I really wasn't. And mm -hmm. the documentary goes into detail as to why I didn't. Mm -hmm. I had like a kind of a dramatic incident. I wouldn't consciously admit that that's why I stopped, right. but I stopped. Right. Whatever that muse is or that creative spark was just gone. Mm -hmm. uh, creative spark is a good way to describe it. And right. Jay reawakened that in me. The, the, the possibility that I see with their name being attached to my art right. means like why wouldn't I be able to be promoted or pursued right. some more. So I was working at UPS for the... Uh, at, at 2001 I began working at UPS and I worked there for like uh, eight years. Or okay. And I was working at UPS when he contacted me. Yeah. So when, when someone comes up to you years after the fact that they've seen you and they say your music has changed my life in a way you can't possibly imagine what kind of response do you go through your head? I mean, you're... well, it validates me as an artist. There's no, especially somebody that on with their resume now, right? And especially that I know more about why they're there. They didn't just get a break, right? Usually, that's not the case anyway. But in their case, there's so much. There's so much depth to what they do and their decision to keep their art pure. And for them, the way they do their art for to look at me in that way completely blows my mind. I don't care what happens to me tomorrow, that validates me as an artist forever. I think that's what every artist kind of wants. There's no, you could not put no, no GD, GSDM marketing, mm -hmm. nobody could put a, a, any kind of publicist, no one could do what they did for me by putting their name on this documentary. Here. You know? That's awesome. They, no, no one could do that for me. So, you know, this this is my career here, no matter what happens. I made thirty dollars a day because I'm talking about it. Somebody <laughs> wanted to buy it and so I'm able to kind of try to find a way to make a living. And they put what I provided that for me. Awesome. So yeah. In in this amount of time that this has been going on, have you been recording these stuff? Or? Well, I'm actually I have a new album. Okay. And and, and, and I'm recording it uh, <laughs> when I'm ready. It's really close to being ready. But are you an artist by any chance? Do you, I am, yeah. Do you play guitar or uh, what do you do? Piano. Okay, because it's like you know you have the songs but they're not ready until you right. perform them in front of a bunch of people right. several times. So I, I know exactly. That's what, what I'm ironing out. Sometimes I don't even have the lyrics until I record them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where I'm at now. I don't they're not quite ready yet. Right. And I, I'm wanting, I'm needing to record it based on what's going on now. I need to have something new. Right. And so I'm looking at it, hopefully here in a month or two, or when it's supposed to, actually, is when I should say. What made you start playing music to begin with? Uh, it's a dream I had all my life. I don't know how I latched onto the radio. Only mm -hmm. Whatever the reason was, I have an ear, a natural ear, but I listen to grew up 70s radio. Oh, yeah. And it, my... What I grew up singing has nothing to do with the style that I have right. now. I could never, I could sing anything. It could be, it could be Diana Ross, it could be Captain and Tennille, Roberta Flack, Joni Mitchell, Allman Brothers. I don't care what, it, the radio used to have everything on the same station. Right. So it, it was no, there wasn't yeah. no separation. So I could sing, it could be Tammy Wynette. I don't care who it was. And so, 
But then I heard Chico and the man. You know, you know Chico, don't yeah. be this good. And I was, how old are you? You do all this I'm 35. Stuff? Good God. <laughs> and so back then, that was a big sitcom, and that Jose Feliciano on that guitar made me like, whoa. And so in my mind, that's what I wanted to do. I never learned how to technically play flamenco guitar, mm -hmm. but I found my way to do a lot of notes. Okay. And so that became the genesis of my style. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah that's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that you, I guess you're not classically trained. You just and had not at all. Really, just that's it's totally by ear. And I'm also convinced. I was talking to some people in LA about this last night, which makes me sound like I'm all over the place. <laughs> I got lucky and was able to do Cal Arts yesterday, and uh, they just flew me in for the festival. I hope I can continue to travel like this consistently. Yeah. But I'm convinced now that everybody has an ear. Anybody that loves music, right. listens to the radio, they have an ear. Now, some of us may not be able to immediately express it, right. but I have a fantasy reality show called So You Can't, You Think You Can't Sing. And I want to find people that have that passion, but they can't, and then take them up in the mountains and bring them back. And they wow. can. Yeah. I believe, I'm convinced that everybody can. Right. We all have that kind of, I believe. So I have a natural talent to sing in an ear. The guitar and singing was a real hard thing for me, and I found my way to do it. For example, I can't separate. You know how you lay down track? I can't lay down track. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, so I have this unique thing that's all part of the same connection. That I have, you know? And it's parts per million that people would like it or not. Jay was one of those parts per million. They're like, whoa, this is completely it. I tried to argue with him about that. I said, it's not like I'm Stanley Jordan. Mm -hmm. And he said, I thought, I know who you're talking about. I said, Stanley Jordan is a shit <laughs> until I heard you. And I'm like, there's no way, dude. And so that's what the, the certain sonic for whatever reason there's you know there's certain people that really resonate with my music so I'm thankful for the opportunity hey are you leaving no okay you're not getting rid of me all right okay so um, if people want to find you or find your music or hear about it where can they, where can they hear it um, you can go to CD Baby okay and type in Kevin Gann and I've got two albums The Original Meditator and The, Capa the Capacitor which is a component of the circuit. So both of those albums go Kevin Gant. And also the documentary is available online. Awesome. Yeah. And, and uh, from what I understand, the movie is screening tomorrow. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. And uh, I think I read you're going to perform. I am. Awesome. Yeah, it's so natural to me. I forgot. It's a film yeah. festival, but if you come out, I'll perform. So please come out and support me if awesome. you can. I appreciate awesome. it. Back to theater, 4 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs>